watch out. I try and keep up as fishing gear comes to life in the far east of France. BMC cranks out hooks. To call uh, five to six million hooks every day a lot, then we do a lot of hooks. The story of an iconic brand today. People are passionate about outdoor equipment. Get this. Americans spend more than $20 billion a year on gear. But no one ever really sees how their stuff gets made. Well, that's where we come in. Each week, we throw open the factory doors and give you a behind-the-scenes look at how your favorite gear is made. Made for the outdoors. The magic of fishing gear, as extraordinary as the sport itself. It is incredible, the places fishing will take you. But you know what else is beautiful? Something as simple as a hook. And you'll understand why when you see how VMC hooks get made for the outdoors. A rather famous fishing hook lured us to far eastern France, a region steeped in history old as time itself. We finally made it to the small French town of Melviar, home to an iconic piece of the fishing industry right there, the MC. MC, the Viard Mijon Company, a storied French manufacturer of hooks that come in every shape and every size. Quite a few. I mean, if you call uh, five to six million hooks every day a lot, then we do a lot of hooks. That's Cyril Mathieu. He agreed to show us VMC's very proprietary hook building process under the watchful eye of French production head Cedric Cruzel. Here we go. Photojournalist Josh Bryant and I are the first U.S. crew ever allowed in. This place is 200 years old. Cedric leads us to an area where hooks start as big bales of spooled wire. It's all uh, European wire that we're using. Uh, we have a long, long, long relationship with people manufacturing the finest wire. BMC uses three types of wire, high carbon steel, stainless steel, and a third secret recipe. So we had to have the combination of strength and finesse. What engineers call vanadium, the same high-tech stuff used in very fast cars. Some people in the car racing industry, in the car, will know that type of material because it's used on those really high-end engines. Next step might be VMC's most important. You'll understand in a bit. Workers have to set each of VMC's hook building machines to make a specific hook in a specific size. Remember, you don't just go out and buy one of these things. Every single VMC hook machine came from the brainstorm or idea of these workers, these people. The second generation of machines are those machines that we call Béranger. How old? Pretty 40 years. After four or five days, we pretty much take a spool of wire, fit it into the machine, and at the end, put your hand and hooks will fall, automatically manufactured, fully shaped. Okay, not so fast. Actually, the team runs a few hooks and then shuts down. Test hooks go into an old school magnifier. So it's gonna measure the width, the length, the height of the hook. You wanna make sure that before you push the button and make a million hook, <laughs> you're making a million of the right one. And the right one is only the one that have all these specs here. If the hook gets the green light, manufacturing runs full bore. Machines are continuing to produce even if the, the shift is over. That's what he said, people go home, machines still run. Okay, let's take a break while hooks get going. 
When we come back, I'll explain exactly how these machines make the hooks. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Banks Outdoors. Aquarius Home Services. Border View Lodge. Splash. And Husqvarna. In the faraway French village of Morviar, BMC's machines eternally twist and turn out fishing hooks. Now it's tough to show you exactly how those machines make the hooks. VMC is a little bit secretive about their technology, but this might help you better understand it. There are eight steps. First, the machine cuts the wire and straightens it. Then they add the eye. Then they forge the end or flatten it. They cut it to size. They do a coarse grind to sharpen it. Then they add the barb. Then they do a razor sharp finish on the tip, and then they shape the hook. They have a bunch of these machines doing the same thing. That's how they get to six million hooks a day. Aha! Wow. So those machines can produce hooks for which 1,000 pieces of hooks Wait, only two grams. A giant machine making tiny hooks. I don't need them that small, okay? We try and keep up with Cedric, but pay close attention. We notice something. He meets every employee to make sure to say hello and check to see how their day is going. Literally, every employee. I want Cedric's boss to explain what's going on. But that, that's the advantage of being not a, a too big company. So we, we can know each, each of our employees. We try to keep this family spirit. Uh, and we think it's, a, it's, a, it's an asset of the company. I suppose that's why coffee break comes early. <laughs> Hang with me. This is one of VMC's coolest traits. The machines keep running, but workers stop, at least for a bit. When they sign a permanent contract, we have a, a small celebration, really to emphasize the fact that we believe in the people. Congrats. We know we rely on people, so it's all about people. Maybe that's why VMC has been around more than 100 years. I'll get back to the history in a bit, but first, the story behind trebles more than half of VMC's hook business. will never see. It's where VMC makes treble hooks. All I can tell you, these are proprietary processes. They make a double hook, a single hook, and graze them together, and this is the end result. Those just completed hooks now need a little tough love. Quite big hook. I can bait it easily. It's just wires. Yeah, yeah. very soft way off. They need heat to temper and make them hard. An oven fires the hooks to red hot temps. Then the hooks cool in an oil bath. This batch of hooks is now hardened. <laughs> Just one problem, watch this. They are so hard, they are now brittle like glass. It takes another step now to temper them. The hooks go back into the oven. give that hook the right hardening and tempering process. So when you set your hook, it's not gonna open like chewing gum or break like glass. These hooks are now tempered and watch this. Look at that. They bend before they break. They're perfect, but don't trust me. Severing Claude chews up a bunch of the now tempered hooks. 
to make sure each bends just enough before it breaks. We prefer to destroy 100 hooks out of a batch and make sure that this batch is fine rather than having to dump millions of them. She tests sharpness too. The team also looks at fit and finish. We can see that the brazing area is not perfect. So we cannot finish. We want to be best in class, so we cannot afford to finish. So it's not good. These hooks look perfect to me, but they're not for them. So they have a plan. That plan, a blue can. The point, this hook looks perfect to me. But the VMC, it's not quite right. So it all goes out to be recycled. Those that pass sit ready for the prettiest part of the hook building process. Up next, hooks go for a swim. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Central Boiler. Summit Beer, Ice Castle Fish Houses, Smoky Hills Outdoors Store, and Magnum Research. VMC's French factory pops out up to six million hooks a day. So much to see here, a guy can lose focus. I'll be all right. Right now, shaped and tempered hooks need a good cleaning. Prep them so they can receive their dressing. Cyril certainly has a way with words. By their dressing, he means the hook's color which includes gold. Yes, it's uh, 18 karat gold, yes. No joke. There must be a safe with gold. I cannot tell you. <laughs> I don't know where More it is. More secrets. <laughs> Workers electroplate and chemically treat hooks to create all kinds of colors. In the United States, anglers prefer black nickel finish, created by a series of chemical dips and rinses. The hooks come out just right. Even so, another set of critical eyes. Next, Dmitry Ilchev goes to work. Dmitry's torture machine of sorts wrecks hooks. By design. After that, the maximum of resistance. Uh, here, the pulling on the bar. Computer testing ensures hooks are mechanically perfect which means they're just the right blend of bend and break. Only now can VMC hooks rest a bit before final steps. Considering the plant can crank out six million hooks a day, makes you wonder how such a business comes to be. To understand is to visit a family mansion. the hundreds of, of people. That's Emmanuel Viard, patriarch to VMC's family business. See, the V in VMC stands for the Viard family. Nine generations have crafted iron and steel in this part of France. He 
here we have the very first uh, patents. Patents means the authorization from the king to have here some industrial activity. And uh, that was, this one was dated 1732. Yep, 1732. Even before that time, the Viards forged nails for horseshoes and simple wood screws. Now in the 1800s, the Viards joined with the Mijon family and created VMC, Viard Mijon Company. In 1910, the company decided to tackle hooks. And here from this village, uh, we are manufacturing like more than 60% of the triple hooks sold in all the world. Suppose that's why everyone seems to recognize VMC. Very few countries where, where VMC is not uh, present. So, um, and uh, of course, it's a, it's a pride for us. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Ellsworth Cooperative Creamery, Aquarius Home Services, Border View Lodge, Splash, and Husqvarna. right there and from the concepts go to what the hook will be at the final step going into production so everything is a, in the hands of the designers watching VMC's R&D team makes me think their hooks must be a-okay for servicing every streams and every large piece of water and smaller piece of water all around the globe. And when I say all around the globe, there's not one country where you won't find a VMC hook. Designers create a lot of hooks, and I mean a lot. Yeah, 3,000 de different designs, not even considering the different colors. Funny, but the research and development office sits quite close to this room, where finished hooks get ready to go out the door. Counters still sit at individual desks. Very interesting to see how the hooks go into the packaging. Think about it. A box of 1,000 hooks. <laughs> they could never count and recount all day. So first, each worker counts out exactly 1,000 hooks. And she's setting the, the weighing scale. Then they mark an exact weight. Now they know how to weigh up 1,000 hooks. Pretty simple, even so. One final check there again. They will, you know, shake them, spread them. If they see something that they don't like, they will put it away before they finally close that box, put it in a bigger box that will end up traveling around the world. The art of VMC hooks. A tale as perfect as the end result. A story best realized right here in France. On the water with friends. Cheryl? Okay. Ready to do this? You close your eyes, you run. That's Gael Evan, a fishing guide and guy who loves to share secret spots. The name of this river is Horn. So here there are so really some decent size of fish. So it's called dock fishing. Uh, why talk? Well, because you hold your rod and you, when you feel the bite, it's like, oh, just gotta talk. So that's the talk that, tunk, tunk, that you get on your line. It's so quiet, it's just perfect. I love this place for that. I love the river for this. Good. Perfect, perfect. Let it go. Fish. I love the fish. Bring me the fish in the net if you want. Well done. <laughs> That's a hard technique. 
It's a magical moment. It brings that smile and it's like, ah, yes. <laughs> That's what I came for. It's amazing, it's amazing. Nice brownie from oh, Normandy. It works. Maybe that's what VMC hooks mean to this sport. They don't just create a physical link between angler and fish. Hooks help us all create memories in these kinds of places and maybe more importantly, provide the sharp point, the edge, the connection to adventure. They will shine when they need to shine. They will disappear when they need to disappear. They will do what they're supposed to do. This trip, definitely worth coming this far. What a story and holy cow, France. What a place to fish. We'll see you next week.